Okay, hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be recapping CalBC Unit 10. Now, in my class, CalBC Unit 10 is parametric and polar. So if you're here and you're not in my class and you're looking for series, you're going to need to look for my Unit 11, Unit 12 recaps. Uh, that, those are the units in my calculus class where we study series. So let's just go in and look at kind of the topic list for Unit 10. And then I'll just go in, and like usual, I'll do a little deeper dive on each of the topics. Okay, so the first two lessons were about parametric equations, okay, which is really just two-dimensional curves. Okay, so we started on the first day, we talked about parametric curves and did a little bit of two-dimensional motion. We mostly focused on derivatives that day. Um, slope of the tangent line, second derivative of y with respect to x, which gave us, just like before, concavity. It just was not as easy to compute as it was before. And how to compute arc length. The next time we came in and we did a lot more motion scenarios, that it required an integral. Like here, here's the velocity function, velocity vector in terms of time. You know, you get an initial position, find me a different position at a different time, and then we'd use a definite integral. Just like we'd done before, except then now there's two coordinates instead of one for position. Okay, and then we did a bunch of examples from recent exams, and that was the bulk of the homework for that time. Okay, then we moved on and we started talking about polar. Okay, and so I reminded you about you know, what polar curves are, what the polar coordinates are. Uh, we looked at some common polar curves. We talked about how to compute dy dx, which is very similar to how we computed dy dx up above. Um, we talked about when the tangent was horizontal or vertical, and we worked some examples. Okay, and then on the fourth lesson, we talked about polar areas where we developed a formula, and then we just we just found a bunch of areas. Okay, and it seemed like oh, we're really good at that this year. So I'm not. I mean, I'm going to do a little bit of example on this, but. Um, I think I'm going to mainly be focusing in this video on what are the formulas that we need to know, right? I think that's, that's the big question. Okay, so starting with 10.1, which is parametric equations. Okay, so for parametric equations, uh, and this was generally where we were just taking the derivatives of them, um, asking you about the curves or where it self intersects or whatever, that's not going to be a calculus question. So what I need to tell you is that, you know, as far as motion goes, you know, if you've got the position vector being, you know, x of t and y of t gives position at time t, then we can find the velocity vector just by taking the derivative of each of the components separately. Okay, so then the velocity vector is the derivative of x and the derivative of y. We call that velocity. And then the acceleration vector is still the derivative of position. It's just now it's a derivative. I mean, except now it's a vector instead of just a number. Okay, we learned that to find the slope of the tangent line to one of these parametric equations. That's not what I'd hope would happen. Just trying to get a different color. Um, that in order to find dy dx, okay, we took y prime of t and divided it by x prime of t. Okay, and sometimes they're given it get, are going to give you the position or the x and y as a vector. Sometimes they just give them to you as equations. We need to be able to deal with both of those scenarios. Okay, and then this was easy enough. It pretty much worked like we expected. But then there was a thing that didn't work like we expected, and that was the second derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, and we got that by taking the derivative of dy dx with respect to t, and then we didn't forget to divide by dx dt. Okay, I'm not going to go into why that formula is true. I've got a video for that. You can go searching for it. Why do we divide by dx dt? Search for that. You should get me. Okay, I this year though I started writing this differently, and I meant to keep doing that um, because people were you know not remembering that that just means take the derivative of that thing. Not it's not any sort of multiplication or anything. It's an operator. And that you know when I'd written it like that, people were like oh well, like I can do that. I can do that too, but. Just want everyone to know what I'm talking about here. Oh, and the arc length, so the length of a curve. Okay, so the length of a curve x defined by x of t and y of t, or x equals x of t and y equals y of t, between two time values is a new arc length formula. That's going to be the integral from t1 to t2 of the square root. That's still the same, but what goes inside the square root has changed. 
So this is going to be x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared inside the square root. And we're integrating with respect to time now instead of with respect to x like we did you know, a couple of units ago. Okay, and that was 10.1. All right, in 10.2, there wasn't a whole lot that was new to us, honestly, but, you know, since we'd already talked about position velocity and acceleration in the first lesson when we were taking derivatives, so I think one thing that was genuinely new to us was that the speed of an object moving with position x of t and y of t at time t, we got that by taking the length of the velocity vector, which we got by doing the Pythagorean theorem, and it was x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared square rooted. Okay. And then that's how we computed the speed. And then much like, you know, a, I guess that was last semester that we talked about total distance traveled by an object moving along a line, okay, when we wanted to find the total distance traveled for that object that was moving along a line, we took the integral of speed. We took the integral of the absolute value of velocity. Now we're going to do the exact same thing go orange here. And so the total distance, just a second, the integral from time one to time two, you know, when we started paying attention to when we're done paying attention of speed. And so that's just x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared with respect to time. And then if, you know, I'll move that up there, Look, that's the same thing, and it's like, oh yeah, that does make sense that the arc length would be the same as the total distance traveled if you had an object traveling along a parametric curve. Makes sense. Okay, I think I also need to remind you that, you know, we can get positions from a velocity. So, you know, suppose we know that x of 1 equals 10 and x prime of t, d, wait, dt, pardon me, x prime of t is, I don't know, some function, it's something that always exists, 1 over, um, or maybe 4 over t squared plus 1, I don't know, you know, something like that. And then we could find the position, or the x coordinate of the position of the object at time t equals 5, just by using, you know, the ending position is equal to the starting position, plus the definite integral of the rate of change, right? And I'm not going to, you know, go in and actually do that. The, because yeah, I don't I think we know what, you know, our tangent of 5 is. So we're not going to do that all the way through. But this is just the setup of what you could be asked to do with an integral with parametric free response questions. I'm going to look real quick through the book and make sure there's nothing I forgot, because this isn't very much. Ah, I know one thing that I have not talked about that I feel like y'all might be good to hear about. So, um, we already talked about speed, we talked about total distance, and I haven't talked in this video about an average value of anything. And now they're probably not going to ask you about the average of the velocity, because the velocity is a vector, and I I've never seen that come up on any of the college board items. But what I have seen is average speed. Okay, so let's talk about average speed. Okay, well, you know, in general, that's going to be... Um, the average value of speed, so 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of speed. Okay. And you know, all these things depend on time, so I'm just gonna write dt. Okay, what I want to point out for average speed is that you know the a and b are gonna be two time values. So if I do this and integrate speed, that gives me total distance. And somehow we've known for a long time, much longer than we've been in calculus, that average speed equals total distance divided by total time, right? So that would be x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. So, you know, don't forget about average speed. But I think that's, that's got to be it for, for parametric. I think, I think we're ready to move on to polar. OK. When we move forward and we started talking about polar, I started by, you know, talking to you about polar coordinates. What do they mean? And so I think I'll give you just a little bit on that. Okay, so the point R theta is, you know, suppose theta was, I 
you know, pi over fourth. And we'd be going out this way, and r is three, we'd go three units out along the line theta equals pi over four, or along pi equals four. Or pi, theta is pi over four. Okay. And so if that was, yeah, this point would be the point where r is equal to three and theta is equal to pi over four. And I think that's all I'm going to say about the coordinates. If you need more, go back and go back and watch the whole video. Um, the important formulas that we needed to know, and these are really important, that x is equal to r times cosine theta and y is equal to r times sine theta. Okay. We do have formulas for theta and r in terms of x and y, but they don't come up nearly as often. And I'm going to say, you know, in terms of what you must know for, you know, this unit exam, I'd say x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Okay. Those are the big, the big formulas. Okay. dy dx is again going to equal y prime over x prime. because y is a function of theta, r is usually r of theta, r is some function of theta, I don't know how you want to say it. Um, I'm just going to say that these both probably require product rule. Both of these derivatives. Okay, uh, what else happens? Oh, a horizontal and a vertical tangent. Yes, that's something we need to be aware of. Okay, we know that a horizontal tangent is where dy dx equals zero. And this would happen if y prime was equal to zero while x prime was non-zero. Okay, so. Yeah, that's where y prime of theta equals zero. And vertical tangent is going to be where we divide by zero, right? Where dy dx is non-existent because of division by zero. We've seen that before in this class. Okay. And again, you know, because x is the product of r of theta and cosine of theta, you know, actually doing these derivatives is going to require, unless r of theta involves secant or cosecant, I think. Okay. Now, or r was constant, I guess that would be it, in case we would need product rule. All right, let's let me just make sure. Before I move forward, okay, the, oh yeah, okay. Now, I'm just gonna, I think I've already said it and I'm pretty sure you already know it, but I just want to really emphasize that the meaning of r is distance from the origin. So if they say, find me the minimum distance from the curve to the origin, or the maximum distance from the curve to the origin, that's where we're going to have to run the candidates test. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to do one of those examples in this video, just in the interest of keeping it short, because I did one somewhere along the way. I think in the in the lesson video for 10.3, I think I did one of these. And I think I did it on the homework as well. And so I think I'm just gonna put a note in here. Okay. So if they ask for the greatest distance or the least distance, or the value of theta that corresponds to the greatest or least distance from the curve to the origin, we're gonna run the closed interval test on R of theta on the closed interval A to B. And in case, you know, that goes by a different name to you. You know this as the candidates test. I'll write that candidates test. Okay. And that involves checking the distance from the origin at theta equals a, checking the distance from the origin at theta equals b, and checking the distance from the origin at any place where the derivative of r is equal to zero. Okay. That's, that's what you need to be aware of on that type of question. So now let's talk about the polar areas. Okay, so for polar areas, the number one most important formula to know is that area is equal to the integral between two theta values of one half r squared d theta. Okay, you just have to know that. That's the key to even starting any of these polar area questions. 
okay? And there's a couple of different forms that this can take. So I'm gonna draw you a picture of, you know, I think three regions that would be really similar to the practice problems I did before the polar area quiz uh, that would, I think, that we'll set up but not evaluate. All right, so I've got two curves, r equals f of theta and r equals g of theta. I feel like I pretty clearly labeled those. And then they're going to intersect at the point where theta equals 2.7. Okay, And these are shown for theta between 0 and pi. Okay, so I'm going to just show you how to find the areas of regions r, s, and t. So region r is just bounded by the graph of f from theta equals zero to theta equals pi over two. So this is our best case scenario. This is just where we use our formula and just kind of go, go for it. So area of region R is gonna be one half of the integral as theta goes from zero to pi over two of R squared, R is F of theta. Okay, and I forgot. Kind of what I started doing was um, starting with skeleton, one half r squared d theta, and then filling in r and filling in the bounds after. That, that, some people said they found that helpful. Okay, s. Now, if I reach from the origin to the far edge of this region, I'm hitting both curves. That means I gotta subtract, okay? So the area of region s is going to be one half the integral of, now if I'm subtracting, I know I can combine these by squaring them separately. This is like taking each of the areas separately and subtracting them. So basically I'd be taking, for S, I'd be taking the area of all of this stuff above my pin and to the left of the y-axis and below this curve, and then subtracting away that part with T. And so you need 1 half R squared minus 1 half R squared, but you can combine those, right? And so on the outside I've got this curve, that's G of theta. And on the inside, I've got f of theta, okay? And this is as theta starts at, for s, okay, starts up here at pi over two. And it goes all the way to here where theta is equal to 2.7. Okay? And then t is gonna be slightly different because t, well, if I reach from the origin to the edge of the region, I'm only ever hitting one curve at a time. But as it rotates after 2.7, I'm hitting a different curve, right? I'm not keeping going on that same curve because that's, well, that's that little triangular piece. Okay, in T, I'm gonna have to add two of them together. And when we're adding the two integrals together, there's no way that we can combine these because necessarily if we're doing the addition thing, it's because the, the two integrals have different bounds, so we can't combine them. So the first one's gonna go from pi over two to 2.7. Okay. And we're going to be integrating on this one, which is f. And then afterwards, we're gonna be on this one from 2.7 to pi, and I th that's g. Okay, so plus g of theta squared d theta. And that's pretty much the three scenarios that polar areas can, can boil down to. And I think that's all I got to tell you as you're reviewing for the unit 10 test. The, my best advice is go back and look at the old quizzes, look at the homework problems, look for multiple choice problems on the extra practice problems linked to the calendar. That's still not enough going to Schoology. I think I've got some extra practice for a few of these topics, you know, parametric and polar. And if, if that's not, I gotta think that's enough, but if that's not enough, you're just gonna email me and let me know what you need and I'll provide it for you. Thanks for watching.